Hello everyone, uh, this is Brox Gags. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at for each next loops inside of VBA coding. And so these things are very helpful if I've got a collection of objects and I want to iterate through each element in that collection, uh, maybe look for a certain property that it has, or perform some action on it. And so some examples I've got here, um, we'll be doing the first bullet point here, and we'll iterate through some cells using a range object and if we find one that matches we're going to offset from that cell a little ways to grab a certain value from it kind of looking through a table i've got somewhat like a vlookup i believe i've got a column that's going to be an identifier and then each column to the right of that are going to be properties of that uh, specific item in the row um, other things we could do is we have a collection of objects um, we could have some student objects and we could run through each one of those and say pull out the grade and maybe we're trying to calculate the average grade for a class there so we'd have to pull out the each student's grade uh, we'd sum all those up we'd have to keep a count of how many students we have that come from the collection of student objects and then we could of course divide those in order to have the um, arithmetic mean of the student grades um, also if I was looking at Excel um, Excel has a collection of workbooks as far as the application level and so I could um, iterate through every workbook in the collection and say print out the uh, name of the workbook itself there. And so that's just a, a few examples. Um, again, the example we're going to look at is on this sheet in my workbook. I've got a nice little table here. The table is from our um, Mechanics Materials textbook we're using by Mont. You can see the reference at the top there. And it basically has properties of I-beam cross-sections. Um, We've got S shapes as well as W shapes in here, and then each column to the right of the shape column are different properties of it there. So things like the area, the moment of inertia about the X axis, the Y axis, depth, so on and so forth here. And so what I want to do is I want to set up a range. So when I pass a string that's going to represent one of these shape identifiers here, it's going to search through the range, find the specific row, and then when it find the row, say I want to offset and grit this I sub X value, the moment's inertia about the horizontal centroidal axis, and then be able to print that to the debug screen for now. Of course, after I find it, I could do a number of different things with it, but here we'll just print it because we're focusing on that for each loop. And so I guess how would we go about doing that is the question. Um, well, first I'm going to be in a sub, I'll just say public sub for each next test. And there we go. And so what do I need? Well, I'm going to have to define that range. Think of that range as a collection of individual range objects or cells in order to search through. And so I'll say dim search room G as range. Um, it is a range, so we have to use set. And so we can do set search RNG. And since this is a range where nothing's going to be changed, I'm not going to add any more. We'll say that table is the way it's always going to be. Um, I'm just going to say something like sheet. Four, you might say, how do I know sheet four? Well, if I come over here to the MX Excel objects, that sheet is named mot underscore a7-8, and that is sheet four for the variable name. So that's why I'm using sheet four. And I'll put dot range, and then I'll have some specification in quotes here. That range, one way I could specify this is just looking at it. It looks like it's a10 down to See here, A10 down to A57 is the range. And so all those highlighted are the cells that I want them to be in the range. So A10 colon A57 will be what I write inside of this double quotes for the string. A10 colon A57. Uh, so that's contains the range that I'm going to search through. And then I'll say, say, well, I need an object to be uh, my counter, if you will. And I'm just going to call that index. And so dim index as range, and then I can set up my for each loop. So I can say for each index in search range, next index. And so what it's going to do, it's going to start at the top, and it's going to search each individual range object in this big range for a certain value. Um, one thing to note, my little counter here, what I'll call this little index um, variable, needs to be of the type of the items in the collection. And so in this case, think of kind of the range here. My search range is a collection of range objects. That's why I'm making this dim as range there. Um, the only thing left we need is we need something to search for. Uh, so dim search str as string. And so let's say we search for a certain string. Let's say this S18 by 70 is what we'll be looking for. And so we'll say search 
string is equal to s10 by or 18 by 70. There we go. And so we need to say something like if index.value, this gives me the value that's held in that range is equal to search string, then do something. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, I need to get the moment of inertia. So I say dim moment of inertia. And I'll call that a double. And we'll say, well, we need to find the moment of inertia now. And so we'll say moment of inertia is equal to index. And it's a range object now. So in that range object, one of the things it can do as far as property wise is offset. And so offset allows us to offset a certain number of rows or a certain number of columns from the range we're looking at. And so in this case, the data is laid out in rows, so I don't want to offset a row down or up, so I just want to stay on the same row, so I'll put zero for that argument. The column, I'm here, I need to go from column A all the way to column G because I want this IX to value, so I'm going to offset one, two, three, four, five, six columns to the right, so I just put comma six, and that gives me, I'll find it, I'll come over six columns, I end up here, and then I just need the value in that range, so I'll put dot value at the end here. Also in this case, after I find it, there's no need for me to keep going, and so I'll say exit 4 here. And with this, let's make it a little bit smarter, we'll say something like if moment of inertia is greater than 0, then we'll print something else in if, and so if it's greater than 0, we'll print Uh, value and um, let's put moment of inertia. Else we'll put debug.print uh, search not found. Search item not found. Uh, the default value for a double should be zero. And so if it doesn't find anything, what's going to happen is we'll just have a zero down here and we'll just print search item not found. And so I guess let's run this real quick, uh, just to see what we end up with. I just hit F5 while being inside of the sub. You can see it printed value 923. And just like we were looking here, 923 is the correct value for there. Um, let's put something in here that we can kind of check the loop as we walk through it here. Um, we'll hit F5. We will be able to step through now. So the first thing we're looking at is S24 by 121. Well, that is not equal to S18 by 70, so we keep moving. Next row held S24 by 90. Again, not equal. S20 by 96. Again, not equal. So on and so forth. And so it just keeps checking until we find the right one. And so at some point, it's going to say S18 by 70 there is equal to S18 by 70. Now I'm offsetting 0, 0,6. The value there is 923. That's being set in the moment inertia variable. Now I hit this exit four, so I'm going to jump out of my for each next statement. Come down here, moment of inertia 923 is obviously greater than zero, so we execute here. We print to the debug screen, we end up and we're out of the sub. And so it's a very handy way, especially if you're going to have data stored in tables inside of Excel, uh, to search those tables for a certain identifier, and then I can always offset around in the table uh, to come up with the different properties of the row that I'm looking for. Uh, so it's very handy uh, to use inside of Excel for that table search functionality there. And so you can also use this not just with ranges though, but I had a collection of other objects. I can always loop through those collection, um, every one of them using the for each um, loop. Uh, it's similar if I was using something like a collection, if I did it for um, an irregular for next loop where I said something like dim i is integer for i equals one to collection.count next i. Um, it's really the same type of functionality as that, um, if you want to think of it that way. And so uh, I believe that's all I need to look at here. Um, again, um, here's a, a reference that we've been pulling some of these concepts from if you want to take a look at it. And thank you for watching the video. Hopefully this helps you uh, get for each next loops going in your code.